Hello ladies and gents, another video brought to you by Emshood and today I'm giving you an update on my Fidoli Noders and another extension. I mean, don't get me wrong, I kind of make it sound like a chore, but I do love these ladies, They're, they are great fun. Now I know what you're thinking, Hood, you did another video extending these guys a month and a half ago, why are you doing it again already? Well check out this post from Instagram and it says it all. Look how busy they are. I cannot physically get my liquid feeders out of those nests anymore and i've got about four in there at the time of doing this video so i kind of need a new outworld i think the nest is still okay but i'll show you that in a second but i'm desperate for new outworld now the issue with these guys is they're escape artists so you kind of need to be a bit selective about what outworld you give them this is why i like the amboy cylinder nests because they're pretty escape proof pretty not not completely escape proof but pretty good probably one of the, some of the best on the market but two issues, one, they're small, and even the bigger one's too small, and two, they are rubbish for filming in. Before I talk about New Outworlds, let's see how the progress is. Now this video was done not long after I'd successfully moved them into this nest and after my last video, just after my last video. In fact, this footage might actually be in my last video, I can't remember, but I will put a link to it in the top right corner now. So as you can see, they've got a healthy pile of brood, they've got a good amount of workers, and that small Outworld was pretty, pretty cool for them, and it worked pretty well. Um, but as you can see from this next video now, they have grown quite significantly. I can't even see the bottom anymore. The, the top is pretty much window bit. It's pretty much full of ants and brood. There is quite a fair bit of space in there because I'm not. I might put it in a bit later, but you'll see that there's. Um, when I get the macro lens, and you can actually see down, and, and the pile of brood is pretty huge, and they're even in all the tunneling area as well. So I need to think about an extension of the nest, but I think I'll get away with it for a little while longer yet. Now, I do really like this nest, and I want to get another one to extend to my Fidolis, but unfortunately, Ankit UK are no longer in business due to various reasons. Check out the website, it explains it there. But they do say they do commission jobs, so if anybody from Ankit is listening, I want another one, let me buy one. Please. Now, I did review this product, and the link's in the top right corner now if you want to check it out. The Outworld I decided to go with was this one, which is the Wakushi S3 Outworld module. Now, I'll put a link to the description below so you can check it out yourself. Now, the reason I went for this is because I bought the S1 to use my pavement ants because they're pretty small and I wanted something pretty tight. And I looked at this before, but wasn't willing to spend 30 quid plus postage if it didn't work for my Fidolis. So when I got the S1, I was reasonably impressed with the seals that they've done and I thought it'd work for my Fidolis. So I decided to work, uh, get it for this one. Now, if you want me to review this nest and the smaller one, let me know and I'll put a review together. This week, I was supposed to release the video for my Venus nest, but I want to change some bits. I've spoken to Wakushi, uh, not that they're swaying my opinion or anything, uh, but I have decided to put some ants in to see how they get on. And uh, the colonialist wants to do a bit of a bounce off review as well. So that's why I've put a hold on that at the moment. But if you want to do, me to review this, let me know and I'll do it. And just for the record as well, peeps, I have nothing against Rakushi stuff. I just didn't think the Venus nest is very good. Still don't, to be fair. Spoiler. Now, enough of me talking rubbish and let's get down to it. Now, I had to make a tube off screen because it took a bit of fin fiddling around to get it to fit properly and to see how I wanted it. And because of the limited space and the size of this nest, uh, wrong, this outworld, I had to loop the cable around the front of the old outworld so I can attach it up and fit it all into space. Now, you might be asking what am I doing there? I'm actually rolling up some cotton wool. So I'm ready, as soon as I disconnect it, I can ram some cotton wool in there so I can minimize my amount of scapees. Works. But I still get escapees everywhere, just my luck. In the interest of not boring my viewers to pieces, I've sped this up a little bit. As you can see, I've put cotton wool in both ends and I've got a pokey pokey to stick it in. Now, Captain Hindsight to rescue on this one, because in hindsight, I would have done this side first and then connected it up to the nest, but I didn't. So, going forward, I'll probably change that a little bit. Because this part goes pretty well, and to tell you the truth, I'm pretty smug with myself. I've got one escapee there, just pop the lid off drop her in she's happy as larry but this is where it kind of goes wrong from here because you can't really see it here but the end is of the tube that's attached to the outworld is splayed out because it's been over the um saw fix into the nest and i didn't even clock this until i tried to stick it in the tube there and i couldn't get it in for love nor money and because of that i got escapees everywhere 
Now in the interest of not sending you guys to sleep, I've sped this bit up. Now, ultimately, because the end was splayed, I couldn't get it in and I got a load of escape peas. So I ended up getting some scissors and cutting off the splayed end so I could fit it in. And you can see the escape peas running over my hands. There was quite a fair few that got out to a point of fact. And then with my fat fingers, I found it difficult to get it on with the outworld as well. But I finally achieved it. So just collect up the work, as you can see I'm doing with a bit of cotton wool, dab it down. They tend to, not always, grab onto it and then you can just like pick them off and drop them in. Now what comes with the nest tubing wise and the adapter I got for it was this really, really thick tubing you see here. Now it's thicker than anything I've ever used before. I know there's thicker, uh, larger ones for leaf cutters, but we're not talking about leaf cutters here guys. Um, and it's a bit of a pain to be honest, cause I had to cut my thicker stuff then thinner stuff to fit it in my little bendy things. But don't worry about it too much. It does slot in relatively easy, but I think I'm not sure if I've got it on video or not, but it does pop out relatively quick, easily as well. So I had to put um, blue tack around that to stop it coming out because it is an issue. Now this was one video, but I kind of clipped it just to make it quicker. And you can already see I've just connected it up and one of the workers is gingerly checking out the outworld straight away. Check out my PJ bottoms. I hope you like the style. Anyway, let's move on for my PJs. Now this has been sped up times eight normal speed because I wanted to get an idea of how how quickly they recruit and stuff like that when they're investigating but unfortunately this is times eight and it still took forever but what i do find interesting is how long they loiter outside of the tubing and even they, when they get strong in numbers i normally see fridolis especially these noders being bald as brass and i chopped in half a cockroach for them to hopefully coax them out because i really wanted to see in real time how quickly that they recruit workers now at the end of this clip you'll see that i've uh done a time lapse because i didn't think it would take them that long but literally they just reached critical numbers outside of the um, tubing which took a while to be fair and then boom they're all over it but you'll see that in a second now it is disappointing that i didn't get it in real time either there is a worker on the cockroach now but that was one that i flipped in the top of the nest because she was on my fingers i don't know how she got there but because this is a new outworld, it will be, and they're not really in it, it would be awesome to show you how quickly they do recruit the workers. And I really, really wanted to get it in real time. But like I said, unfortunately, I didn't get that opportunity. But hopefully going forward, I might be able to. Now there's two outworlds to choose from. There might be more in one outworld than the other. But I've still got it on a time lapse, which I'll show in a second. So it's not all bad. I mean, literally, as soon as I put the time lapse is when they make the jump and then just check out here they go, it's there. Now just look how quickly they turn into a swarm. <sighs> Got it, I didn't get this on normal views, but they absolutely go crazy. And to tell you the truth, to watch it in real time is pretty interesting as well. I kept on looking at the camera, that's why it moves slightly. But absolutely go crazy, love it. Now I know this was a big cockroach. In fact, it was one of the larger ones I've put in it, and I think the largest one these guys ever had. And if memory serves, I think this was the following morning. Obviously, I was in my PJs before. So this is the following morning. And as you can see, they've processed a lot of it. And there's still loads of workers anywhere. But just check out the majors. This is what I love about the Fridolis. Just the size difference. And they won't come out and they won't loiter around. But as soon as there's food there for them to process, boom, they're straight on it. And they're there. But I also found quite interesting as well, which I think I caught on this video, was... The bring the brood out to the food because they can get the food into the nest via these tubings because it was too wide and they, they look they, this this leg goes in and out in and out in and out they cannot decide what they're going to do with it but yeah they normally break up the foot look, they, that's what I mean there's a brood there and they bring it out to the food and, I, and it's not just a one off like that one like a random worker doing going off on a mad one and deciding do you know what I'm going to take some brood out for for a walk. But you'll notice once you get your eye in, once I stop moving the camera, thank you, um, you'll see that there's more brood about. You've got this one here, and then I'll follow it around, see what she's doing with it, and then I see others with brood. So it appears to me that it's a regular occurrence. If it's too big to get in the nest, they bring the brood, some of the brood, not all of it, obviously, to the food, which is really interesting. I didn't get any more. It must be this next video.
Now the Fidelis were distracted with their new nest and look at that head in the bottom right corner. It just <laughs> moves around in circles. And then if you look at the tubing as well, that leg is still going back and forth, back and forth. I love Fidelis, they're so funny. Uh, anyway, this video is 30 minutes long and I speeded it up times 10 and it's still four minutes long. So what I will do is, because it's quite the pain to clean these guys out, um, but because I got the new outward, it affords me that opportunity to, it's less busy in here, I could get the feeders out and I was cleaning up that massive graveyard and trash heap. And there's a lot of dead Fidolis in there, but not an issue because they only have short lives and they reproduce like it's going out of fashion. Lucky. Um, but they also put their rubbish in there as well. And I, I tell you, this cockroach you see me put in, they will process this down into little bits. They will, they will break it down into nothing. I've put many big cockroaches in and nothing has come out of the powder. Really interesting trait of them to be fair, so protein hungry. What I will do is I'll do an ant calendar style hidden video, even though it's not hidden because it's in the top right corner. So if you want to click on it and you want to watch this full video, knock yourself out. Now I have sped this up slightly, but I had a cunning plan because these normally live on a shelf and only live on this when I'm doing videos. And you can see that blue tack I was talking about. I had to put blue tack on because it popped off. Obviously, didn't record that. But anyway, so this bit of cardboard's cut to the side, cut to the size of the shelf they normally live on. And because it's so cumbersome, because there's three big things to carry now, I decided to put them on this so I can just pick them up and move them without disturbing them, overly disturbing them. A uh, bit of a cunning plan there, guys. So as you can see, now it's on that cardboard. I can easily pick it up without overly disturbing them and put them on the shelf. Stroke a genius for me, if you reckon. Genius. But like I said, that's it for today then, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video about my noders. Again, get another extension. These guys are just reproducing quick and I can keep up, I think. But anyway, if you guys have got any suggestions for a video you want me to do, please leave it in the comments. If you want me to review a product or you want me to do a care video on an ants or you want to see more of a di different ants because you're getting bored of my noders, let me know. But anyway, I'm going to say bye for now, guys. Don't forget to check out my Instagram and stuff. And bye-bye for now.